just to say, we have people here from, obviously all uh, other locals here from right across the area. We also have people from the Friends of Palestine uh, Ireland organization. John Mallon here, who's below me, is people will have noticed taking a lot of photographs. John was part of the flotilla that went to try and break the blockade to Gaza. Uh, put himself in, in, in danger in relation to so he's taking a lot of photographs tonight and he tells me these are going directly to the people in Gaza to show the sort of solidarity that there is right across Ireland uh, for them so uh, I'm delighted to have John with us we also have our next speaker uh, a person who's been very very closely associated with the Palestinian cause a passionate advocate of peace and justice in Palestine and an end to the aggression to the people in the West Bank and Gaza, Michelle Gard. Akarja, on behalf of myself and my comrades from Irish Friends of Palestine, Belfast, can I thank you all for coming out tonight and joining in the global condemnation of Israel's latest orchestrated genocidal massacre upon an innocent civilian population in Gaza. Myself and other activists who battle daily to ensure that Palestine has a voice in Ireland and across the world aren't at all surprised that the illegal state of Israel has yet again launched a merciless campaign of death and destruction in Gaza and the West Bank. Day in and day out, through internet websites dedicated to doing the same, we witness the brutality that this illegal apartheid occupation inflicts on innocent civilians, minute after minute, hour after hour, day after day, month after month, year after year. What is worse is the deafening silence across the globe. For the third time in the last six years, Israel has cruelly unleashed the full fury of its military machine against the defenseless 1.7 million people of Gaza, inflicting heavy civilian casualties and further devastation on the long besieged and impoverished Gaza Strip. With cynical disregard of the realities of this latest one-side confrontation between Israel and Palestine, instead of condemning such recourse to massive violence as aggression that violates the UN Charter and fundamental international law principles, the reaction of Western diplomats and mainstream media has so far perversely sided with Israel, citing the bland sorry, rationalization repeatedly stressed by Netanyahu that every nation has a right to defend itself, and so it does, but not by way of aggression. From the UN Secretary General to the President of the United States, the main insistence has been that Hamas must stop all rocket attacks while Israel is requested ever so politely to show maximum restraint. Up to now, the Israeli attacks have caused some 200 deaths, more than half of whom are women and children, that's 80% of the civilians, and more than a thousand physical injuries, plus countless more injuries to mental health. In this period, hundreds of rockets have been fired into Israel from Gaza, but have yet to cause a single death. What is even more tragic is knowing that there are mothers just like me and many others here tonight who in the last six days have ripped the broken, mutilated bodies of their children and babies from the rubble of bombed out homes. In some instances, whole families being torn apart, their bodies in pieces. The sound of blood-curdling screams are being emanated on the streets as the death toll rises again and again and the morgues fill up to full capacity. In one message I received from a friend in Gaza on the third night of the slaughter, bodies were being brought to the morgues in pieces and the coroner could not identify them. The images are terrifying and heartbreakingly real. I stress over my children's safety every single day as any responsible parent does, but I try to put myself in that place, in the shoes of a Palestinian mother. I can't even start to draw any kind of parallel on what it would be like to be the mother of a Palestinian child. I have watched Mark Rejev and other Israeli propaganda puppets speak from the platform of many Zionist media outlets and they have lied through their teeth again and again. The same bile they drip fed, dip, drip fed the international community as was done during Operation Cast Lead and Operation Pillar of Clyde. They speak about having no alternative but to bomb Gaza. 
because Hamas militants were firing rockets at towns throughout Israel. Well, Mr. Rajiv, we, the people of conscience around the world, have a little bit of advice for you. We don't know where you have been for the last 67 years, apart from Australia, where you were born, and then decided to be a part of the occupation of Palestine. But there is an alternative. Go back to where you came from, give the land rightfully owned by the Palestinian people back, and stop murdering innocent civilians and acting the victim in order to confiscate more of their land without any sanctions or repercussions from the international community.